Welcome back to Rugby I'm here on Made in Leeds. Um, now, we got out and about recently, went to see Huddersfield Giants. When we knew we were doing Magic Weekend stuff with the RFL, we thought, right, we need to get out and about, meet some proper Geordies, and there's only one real Geordie, Rugby League player, Spuggy, a.k.a. Chris Foreman. That's right, and I think we're really going to sell the North East and persuade people that we can get players to come out of there. We've got to use the proof, haven't we? We've got to go see people who've played right at the top, international, NRL, even coaching in the Super League right now uh, with Chris Norman there. Uh, and he's as north as Geordie as you get. So I went across to see him. He's doing a great job with Huddersfield 19s. He's a big part of their youth development. They smashed all the bits in the OK on the day. And yeah. uh, we got a little bit of an interview with him and talked to him about Alan Shearer, about sport in the North East, and particularly about Wall's End, where he grew up and where Shearer played his amateur junior football. All right, this is uh, Rugby M meets the second favourite Newcastle son, the one and only Spugalicious. Rugby M's here at Mould Green, old amateur rugby team. Uh, we're here with Chris Lawman, under-19s coach of Uddersfield Giants. Just had a massive win, or a really good win. Are you happy with last performance today, Chris? Yeah, relatively. As, as you can uh, as you can feel and hear the wind, it's it's pretty difficult to play in conditions like this. That uh, we, we've not played up here for for a, for a long period of time. It's only our second game up here, and they're, they're coming to terms with the weather and the conditions. But um, all in all, got to be happy. How long have you been coaching? How long have you had this role? This is my third year in the in the the role of under 19s coach. I, I think I'm in a in a really uh, important role at the club. I'm obviously assistant to Paul Anderson in the first team as well. But you know, it's, it's an influential role because I get to I get to see everybody come through the club, all the development, all the scholarship, all the academy boys, and still get to have put a little stamp on the first team as well. So you know, I'm, I'm in a I'm in a role that has a lot of responsibility, but it's it's definitely something that's enjoyable and um, and rewards you at the end of the day. The thing you notice about Smuggy straight away is his. Uh North Eastern accent, that Jordy accent. You're not from round here. You're from uh, somewhere that's not usually synonymous with rugby league. Up in Newcastle, I wanted to chat with you about the Magic Weekend at St James's Park. How big do you think it'll be as an event for the people of North East to see rugby league up there? I, I think it'll be huge, Jamie. I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, I, I think the the North East fan in general is a is a is a sport connoisseur. You know, everyone just assumes you know the 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 associate the black and white of Newcastle with with the city, but you know they they're, they're an educated sports group. Um, there's rugby union up there. You know, there's been rugby league up there for for quite a uh, you know maybe a couple of decades now, and uh, and the rugby league team has just changed names to Newcastle Thunder, which I think is really apt. The, the the year of magic weekend being up there in the northeast, but yeah, I think that I think the fans of the northeast are in for a treat. You know, we all know it's the it's the greatest sport on the on on the planet, and uh, you know it's going to be a great spectacle. And I, and, I, and I really feel that the northeast fans will turn out in the numbers. How big do you think it's for Newcastle Falcons and uh, see more credit to buy into that Newcastle Thunder and, and promote both games in a way and get people playing rugby league and union? You know, I, I think it's really important. You know, we we shouldn't see it as competing against each other yeah. what we should do is we should all embrace it as sports fans in yeah, general and, and, <laughs> and you know there's 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 room for everyone to you know to get involved in all all the sports you know it shouldn't just be categorized as a rugby union fan a rugby league fan or a football fan you know i think all sports fans should embrace it it's the greatest game you know there's room for every, there's room for all sports to to be supported in the northeast and um and I, and I and i think just on your point about the newcastle falcons you know I think uh, Mick Hogan, who's uh, the CEO of the Falcons, is is born and bred in Lee. Um, went to university up in the northeast. I've known Mick for a long time, and and, and I don't think I'm talking um, out of term here when I say that he prefers rugby league to rugby union. <laughs> good, good, good. So yeah, I mean uh, Mick's doing a great job at, uh, at promoting the, the Thunder as well as the Falcons. You know, he's uh, with their venue change and they're playing out playing all their home games out at Kingston Park, which is which by all means in the short term it's been a success they had 1500 there which is a which is a, a, a high attendance for them what, over the last decade or so is the highest attendance over, for over a decade so um, they're going from strength to strength and you know I, I, I honestly think that rugby league can be a success we've been seeing it for a long time the people of the northeast just have to buy into it and I think Magic Weekend will allow for that Amen to that, and you're proof in the proverbial pudding that it can happen. You've got young kids. If any young kids want to start playing rugby league and they have that opportunity, what can they do with that? I'll emulate you. I mean, you've played NRL, you've played international, you've been all the way. So anybody watching it North East, any young kids, what do they need to do to become the next Chris Foreman? I think a prerequisite is to work hard, Jamie, and you—you you know that you—you'll be a, a you know a big supporter of that. You've got to work hard. You've got to make sacrifices. At the same time, you've got to get a little bit of luck along along the way as well. Um, you know, I've I've learned from I've been in a fortunate position, like you say, I've been in the NRL and I've I've been at a lot of a lot of good clubs and and to 
the main thing for me is to learn, is to learn, is make mistakes, but then learn from your mistakes. Um, apply yourself, and you know, I've got a, I've got a ten point bullet list, and I reckon five of those bullet points are work hard, and and, and I can't say more than that. The atmosphere at Newcastle is obviously it's a great place to be. It's a great place to go out. It's a good day life, good night life. We're gonna go try and meet up with Alan Shearer real soon, who's a massive sporting legend. Can I, can I come? You certainly can, mate. Yeah, we've got to get you. Yes, you're definitely well, yeah, coming down. I'm going to put you back in my van and you're coming. <laughs> you've, you've heard it here, Rugby. Um, what can the people of the, the lower north uh, look forward to going up to, to Newcastle? What can they expect? I like it how you term that, the lower north. They're still northerners, but lower northerners. <laughs> no, um, um, mate, I, you know what? The, embrace the culture. You know, the people of the north east are, are genuinely lovely people. You know, they'll, they're, they're very hospitable. They will... They love a pint, which is great. They love a they love a Newcastle brown ale, which is fantastic. Um, there's lots of things to do up there. There's lots of tourist stuff. You know, they they used to having tourists on a regular basis up there. Um, obviously, the nightlife is well talked about. You know, I'm assuming that lots of people will have, will have had a drink on the big market or down the quayside, which is which is fantastic. But maybe explore the coast. Go to the coast, um, Blythe and Whitley Bay and Tynemouth and all those sorts of places are really nice. Um, if you get an hour or two free um, be- before the before the weekend, but obviously the the main thing is to turn up to St James's on nice and early on Saturday morning and and get and get your uh, get your rugby league in. Top man, Chris Foreman, your absolute start. If we get in touch with uh, Holland Sherry, you definitely have to come up with us now. Excellent, top man. Look forward to it. Right then, uh, we just seen Newcastle's second favourite son there, Chris Foreman. Yep. Chris Foreman, great lads. Bit loose, bit crackers apparently when he grew up, but he's turned into a, a fantastic professional. I think he's indicative. Of the mentality up in the North East. Great lads, great sports, love playing uh, rugby league. Right, talking of mentality, we went to UCLan yep. with Mark Adamu List to look at uh, some work he'd been doing for the RFL about the mental side of the game and uh, in particular the under 19s academy. We had every coach there from all the different clubs, yeah. uh, including uh, Thierry from Catalan, lovely man, talking to him about some of the uh, the French opportunities and um, whether there should be another franchise over there in Super League. He had loads to say and uh, this is us lot down with uh, Mark Adam Willis and the crew at the U Clan in uh, Cheshire. Mark, it's, uh, it's great to be here today. The boys seem to be really enjoying themselves, learning a lot about youth development. If you use two or three key points that these boys are going to take home, that's important for developing our game in terms of the youth. What do you think they're going to be? I think probably um, fostering the importance of coping with setbacks, learning to cope with setbacks, and you're going to get setbacks in academy and senior play, international play, so being able to take a hit and essentially get back up again and work forwards and, and kind of go forwards. I think one of the other ones is um, being able to be quite regimented in how you train, how you practice, make sure the long hours that you're putting in are worthwhile, you're doing the right stuff, you're really kind of pushing the right things in training and I think it's an opportunity. We know that the coaches are doing a good job already. Maybe take the one percenters that they can take. So how can you guys improve as coaches? How can you maybe support the kids that little bit better? and foster the, their development in a way. It's great to see so many ex-players here, lads mm-hmm. that I've played against. It worries me a little bit because some of these are younger than me and they've retired in the coaching. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to knock out a game. But uh, it's good in it to get that experience yeah. back in the game. That yeah. must be a big factor having yeah. ex-players giving yeah. back to the young kids. And I think I think it's huge because, you know, they live uh, young Leeds lads growing up seeing you play. Uh, lads at Wigan can relate to Jordan James. Lads, uh, you know, look at Lee Crooks over there. He's he's GB international, etc. They're going to be, at the end of the day, you guys have got credibility, and it's look. This is what worked for me. You can really push it. You can really develop. They'll think about when they saw him, seeing people scoring a try or making a solid tackle or whatever, and seeing them perform at the elite level. I think that it just makes it that little bit more credible that we've got the right people pushing pushing these things. And the game is a structure as well. I was, I was learning upstairs that it's important for kids to mentally be able to focus and, and affirm. Mm-hmm. Imagine, if you like, going out and playing first grade mm-hmm. um, to go get that mental imagery. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I noticed was that when I was a kid, I used to play Edinley before the first team matches. Mm-hmm. They were even on Sky, and by the time we finished the game, there'd be three or 4,000 people yeah. there. So for me, making that transition between academy and first team wasn't all that different. But unfortunately now, Super League clubs are taking academies to a different ground are scared of getting the ground dug up but actually if we want to grow our game from the youth it's important to maintain those standards 
uh, and those routines, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think undeniably, and that's one of the things. It's the uh, that's almost like a mental block in the game. It's getting to play on the big boys' pitch, if you like. You know, if you've done it. 10, 15 times as an under under 18 year old, under 19 level, playing on the making your first team debut on home soil isn't actually that big a deal because you're used to the surroundings and you're used to everything. But I mean, I'd I'd highly recommend the clubs are able to do that. Obviously, within their scope of functioning and logistically, if they can make it work, I think it's a, it's a great learning experience for the young players coming through the academy to actually play on that pitch on a Thursday night when all the cameras are getting ready or whatever. I think it's absolutely you know priceless. Welcome to BM. I'm here with Thierry, all the way from the Catalan Dragons. Thierry, um, well, first and foremost, you've come across and you told me um, it's good for yourself and the club to feel more like a Super League club coming to events like today. Uh, yes, like I explained to you, uh, with the creation of uh, Under-19, the Catalan became a full uh, Super League club. Now they have a process to build and form the future Super League player. And already I've noticed the effects of the Catalan Academy on the first team. Uh, people like Stringer coming through the ranks and you've got a winger as well this year who's made some, uh, the debut this year. Yes, uh, this year we have a winger. We come through uh, the Under-19 Academy and uh, two of us, of our players, come from the reserve team. We play in a domestic competition. Catalan is a club. Uh, all the boys who I meet on the show, they always say it's a very difficult place to go and play because the crowd's quite hostile, quite virulent. Um, how, as a club, are you, are you finding Super League the competition? You've been in there a while now. Do you ever think that Catalan could win Super League? Uh, I think they can win Super League. They have the, the squad for that. They just need to, to recover from all the players. And uh, I'm sure they can compete for the team. Also, you've got you've got some fantastic stellar signings like Todd Carney. How's Todd Carney been for, to, to have someone like that at the club for the academy? Do, does he give a lot to the academy? Do you involve him in any of the coaching? Is, is he is he somebody who's enhancing the whole club for Catalan Dragons? Uh, well, the signing of Todd Carney is a big big event for the club, and um, at, the, at this time. Um, you know, he had to, to recover from uh, all his injury and uh, I know he's open to, to come and make some session and I wait uh, for the next month to, to ask him. But uh, the good thing is every player on a top team wants to give some uh, session with us like uh, Gregory Muniz, Thomas Bosk, Scott Duro too and uh, it's very good for, for the kids. We've also seen like Theo Farges at Salford. There's a lot of good French players. Now, France have all struggled internationally. Do you see, um, with the rise of Catalan and the development of your under-19 side, are we going to see a stronger international game in the future? Uh, I, I think it's a first step for to see uh, a progression in an uh, international game. And uh, I think, too, we need, we need 15 player, uh, 50 players uh, playing professional. And uh, we have to build them. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, Catalan for the RFL has been a huge success, a huge successful uh, brand and franchise. Could you see another Super League club in France? Could you see another franchise over in France somewhere else? Uh, I think uh, Toulouse uh, is a good place for that. Uh, could be Avignon too, is another part in France. But at this time, uh, Toulouse worked for the last 10 years to lift in the Super League. And uh, I think it could be a, a good step for the international game for France. Right, stick around for Rugby M here on Made Television. The kids are coming out to train down at the Milford and um, we're going to speak to Russ Parker uh, before we present the trophies uh, to the winning school. Uh, Smeaton are putting the pressure on now, trying to get back in the game. But uh, you'll find out after the break who wins the game and also how Rugby League is going in schools in Leeds. <laughs> 